I don't know about you, but I will do anything not to go to a doctor. I don't like doctors. I don't like going to the doctor. Obviously, I don't like getting sick, but going to the doctor is such a pain. I don't even have a doctor that I go to. Like finding the doctor, sitting there, waiting there, it's a lot of pain. A lot of millennials are feeling the same way. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about a company that is making it less painful to go to the doctor and making money at the same time. If you're new to this channel, my name is Mariusz Konieczny. I run Microcap Explosions, which is a website dedicated to microcap stocks, which are mostly ignored and underfollowed by the investment industry. I wrote about 10 books on investing, one of which is available for a free download at microcapexplosions.com. I also created valueinvestinguniversity.com, which is a free resource to make you a more intelligent investor. You see, in the world of investing, people think that there is value stocks and then there's growth stocks. And I think it's so misleading because you see growth is a variable in value. And I don't have a problem looking at value stocks or growth stocks from the point of view of, hey, I, I don't mind buying or looking at a growth stock, but I am paying attention to what I'm paying because that's important. Right now, I'm going to talk about a stock called Hims and Hers Health. It's an interesting company. I like the business model a lot. I wasn't really aware of this business model until I started studying this company because I, I don't ever go to the doctor. But what this company did is it took the traditional model of making an appointment with a doctor to go get a prescription for whatever treatment disease you have and then they prescribe you something, you, do, you go to the pharmacy and you buy it. See, what this company does is this all takes place over the phone or Zoom or whatever, where they're creating a network effect. They have a platform, obviously, but they have a group of healthcare providers that they work with. And they have to have a group of licensed providers. They cannot have them in-house. So they, you know, doctor groups, whatever, nurses, they have a group of them. And then they help those people get clients. So they get young people, because mostly they're millennials, that they can do this over the phone. They connect them. You get on the phone or Zoom or whatever, you have a discussion with the healthcare provider, you, you know, they diagnosed you and then they prescribe you drugs or treatment. Hims and Hers Health also has their own pharmacies that fulfill those remedies. And also they work with outside pharmacies like Walgreens and Target, whatever, as partners to, to fulfill those. Now, this company was founded in 2017. So not too long ago. It's pretty amazing because in 2018, it had revenues of about $27 million. Today, they are 10 times more, almost 300 million. Like in such a short period of time, the revenues 10x. Why? Because there's this need. There's this need, especially from the millennials, which are the future of consumers of health. Like the old people right now, they probably are still mostly using the traditional system, but millennials want convenience. I mean, they don't even want to go and get their own food, right? They get Uber Eats. Like it doesn't surprise me that they don't want to go to the doctor's office. They just want to do it over the phone or through an app or whatever, just get it done convenient. So this business model was created at the right time when millennials are just well, millennials, it's, it's, a, it's a big group of people. Apparently, I'm a millennial because I was born in 1980. So I'm like the first millennial. So people my age are like starting to get sick and starting to consume more of the healthcare services. So this company is in the right place to provide that. What do I like about this business? Well, first of all, I like about this business is the network effect, which is a moat. The more people that are on the platform, the more providers want to provide their services. So then that's the network effect. This business model also has huge profit margins. And you know how much I like huge profit margins. It's not like super, super recurring, but it is a recurring business model, especially for chronic diseases. When you constantly have to order pills or whatever, it's a recurring business model. As you get older, you have to see more, more doctors for whatever it is that's, that's wrong with you. So you continue coming back to this platform on repeated basis. So they have repeat customers. And if the experience is satisfactory, is if the experience is better than going 
the traditional route, of course, you're going to keep doing this. So there is some recurring revenue and there is some repeat business. So that's wonderful because when January comes, you don't start from zero. You already have revenues and you can just keep adding on more. How do you grow this business? Well, you add more providers to your network. You expand more people that are consuming this. So as you build this, as you grow the network effect, you become stronger and more valuable company. And every marketing dollar that you spend on this business, it's not as much as an expense. It's an investment. It's an investment in the future. Let's take a look at the stock price. Let's take a look at some financials to see if it's priced reasonably. As you can see, the stock price reached about $25 in February of 2021. A lot of them peaked at that time. So at that time, the market cap was $5 billion. Today, it's $1 billion. This company came out as a SPAC. So SPACs were special purpose acquisition companies. They were very hot at that point. So anything that was SPAC crashed and that includes good companies like this. Remember this, 5 billion at the peak market cap. If you look at the revenues, you have to look at the revenues of 2020 for the 5 billion market cap. So it had a 5 billion. So it was trading at almost 35 times revenues. I mean, even though I like this business, I mean, 35 times revenues is a lot. Today, it has a market cap of 1 billion and the, and the revenues are almost 300 million. So it is trading at about three times three times revenues. Now we're talking three times revenues for a business like this all day long. As you can see, the cost of revenue is tiny in comparison to this. So what is the gross profit margin? 75%. What was it in 2019? It was only 53. So they increased profit margins. That's wonderful. 75% profit margin all day long. Absolutely love this. 75%. Okay. So once you have gross profit margin, what can you do with this money? Well, what's the biggest? I would have thought that the biggest uh, expense would be marketing, but I'm wrong. It's general and administrative. I wish this was lower. I'm not, I'm not sure why they're spending so much, but you know, marketing, mar this is what I want to see. I don't mind a big marketing spend because this is, this is a uh, investment in the future and you want to grow this kind of business as big as possible, as fast as possible. Unfortunately, right now it's losing money, but I believe that as this business continues to grow, they're going to eventually be profitable. And of course, the longer they are not profitable, the gap is gonna to have to be closed with uh, printing shares. So the number of shares and dilution will of course be there. Let's look at the balance sheet. So balance sheet, cash and short-term investments, 71 plus 175 almost 250 million dollars of cash in the bank that's wonderful good cash when you we look at the liability side we don't have any any debt we have yeah we don't have any debt so that is very good going back to the income statement so again 300 million of revenues so good business right sold off heavily because it was a SPAC then the growth sell-off, Fed raising interest rates and things like that. Trading at three times revenues, it's very reasonable. I wish that SGNA were lower. Marketing grows the revenues, good business model. I love it. The path to profitability, yeah. If you're a growth investor, even a value investor, something like this uh, is definitely something that uh, we should pay attention to. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. This is how I look at companies. This is how I analyze companies. Please take a moment to subscribe to this channel, like the video, click on the notification button. And of course, leave me a comment. Do you own this? Do you like, do you want to own it? Anything that you want to share, please do so in the comments section below.